What's up guys, Austin Brady here. Today we're gonna to be diving into my desk setup and YouTube studio. I'll show you how I built it out, every item I purchased, what I love about it, what I regret, and at the end I'll show you the total cost of everything. If you're new here, I make videos about filmmaking, gear, tech, and lifestyle, so subscribe if you're into that. Let's start with the studio space itself. So I live in an apartment and so I took over the living room and I built out everything that I have here for my YouTube studio where I can film videos and also where I can get work done for my video production business. We've got some picture frames on the wall, couch, which is really comfortable. It's nice for when I'm relaxing or brainstorming video ideas. We've got my snake plant, his name is Alex. A couple of chairs, my paper backdrop for product or model shoots. Then there's my Grove Made shelf, which has my first camera I ever purchased, a little Canon power shoot. It's nice to remember how far I've come, as well as my JBL speaker, which is great for bumping music when I'm editing, as well as some creative entrepreneur books that I'm still trying to read more of. And last of all, two chairs with my Peak Design backpacks, one for everyday carry and the other one for run and gun shoots. So now I'm moving into the desk setup itself. So this is my Uplift V2 standing desk. I cannot tell you guys how much I love this desk. It's a butcher block, so it's real walnut. I love being able to stand or sit as needed or even adjust when I'm filming or when I'm editing and I adjust the height of my chair. Can you tell I really love this desk? Moving on to my chair, it's the Naus Ergo 3D. I think it's how you say it, ergonomic chair. Basically, it fits you extremely comfortable. It's recommended by chiropractors. The neck adjusts, the back adjusts, height adjustable, the armrest adjusts, basically to fit anyone super comfortably. And it has a mesh material which allows it to breathe, which is really nice when you're editing for long hours. Now moving into the tech, so I love Apple products. So I've got the M1 Max Mac Studio. It's an absolute workhorse. I'm able to edit and do anything I need to with my computer. And then I have the studio display, which pairs super nice with the Mac Studio. In addition to that, I have the Magic Keyboard, which I love. It's got the 10 key, the Touch ID makes it super convenient and it's really minimalist. And I also have the Magic Mouse, which I'm actually starting to think about getting like a Logitech mouse, something with a little more support and something that doesn't charge on the bottom of the mouse. I don't, Apple does a great job usually, but that's definitely one of my pet peeves. Also in my setup, I've got my iPhone 14 Pro with an Apple silicon case. I actually didn't like those cases for a while, but now I'm a huge fan. They're not super durable, but I definitely love how it feels in my hand and it's also super thin, so it's not as clunky on my phone. Then the Apple AirPods Pro, which is super nice for listening to music in the mornings or when I'm running to the gym. And then when I'm editing, I have my AirPods Max, which some people have had issues with lagging. I haven't seen that yet, and I really enjoy the audio quality that they provide. And I'm also rocking the Apple Watch SE, which is nice to work with the whole ecosystem. And let's not forget the HomePod mini, which is really convenient when I'm walking around the studio to be able to ask Siri to set reminders or timers or anything like that to keep me productive. Sometimes it's hard to keep all these chargers organized, so I did buy a little rubber cable organizer on Amazon. It just sticks on the back of my desk, which is super convenient so I can charge everything in one place. Now to one of my favorite parts is the desk accessories. So I have a walnut desk. I wanted to match them with beautiful walnut accessories and I couldn't really find anything until I found Grove Made. They make extremely expensive, but very high quality handcrafted desk accessories. So I started out with the Grove Made felt desk pad, which is really nice to be able to protect my desk from spills or food or anything else that could get on the walnut itself. And it looks really clean to accent with the brown of the walnut. I also have the Grove Made wood monitor stand, which is really nice to put my studio display on top because I like to have my studio eye level or a little bit above rather than looking down and having my neck hurt. The desk tray, which is super nice. This is probably the least organized part my whole desk, but sometimes it's nice to throw things in a tray and just not have to worry about it. Then there's the wood MagSafe stand, which is really nice for when I need to charge my phone wirelessly, and I also have it there if I need to answer a phone call. There's also the wood headphone stand, which is absolutely gorgeous, and you're able to put your headphones on. Because I have the AirPod Maxes, we'll have to talk more about that at the end. And finishing up the Grove Made accessories is the titanium pen and the walnut stand. This was definitely an extravagant purchase. Did not need it, but I really, really love how it matches everything in the setup and it's just kind of fun to have. As for cameras, I film all my YouTube videos on my Sony a7S III, which is the footage you're seeing right now. I also have the 24 to 70 G Master lens on it. Really, really nice, love the setup. I'm actually thinking about getting another a7S III with probably a different focal length to be able to get two different angles of YouTube videos or also for my video production business. The tripod we're using is the Manfrotto Extra Tripod. Really nice, it can be able to extend really, really tall, which is nice for top-down shots, but it also can go really low if you need to get some of that 
that different perspective. It's a really versatile tripod, and I know that it's gonna be stable on it. Another fun little accessory, you may have seen some of my reels over on Instagram. Follow me if we're not connected already. I'm able to use the Atoll S that takes your camera from horizontal and flips it vertical so you can get the highest quality footage for reels, YouTube shorts, TikTok, whatever else you're filming. And that's really nice to have with my gear. Like I mentioned before, I absolutely love Peak Design and all their backpacks. The Everyday Backpack, the Everyday Backpack Zip, the Everyday Tote Bag, as well as the Everyday Sling. I mostly use the Everyday Backpack and the Everyday Backpack Zip, one for my everyday carry and other for all my gear, which is nice when I'm not filming and I can just store everything safely. Now for storage, I have an assortment of SSDs. I actually really need to invest in one big solution so I can have multiple backups and I'm not constantly buying, you know, one, two, three terabyte drives. I can get like a 20 to 30 terabyte drive, which is kind of where I'm at at this point. But I do love these SanDisk Extreme Pros. They're really fast. They have great read and write speeds and they're just really convenient. As for audio, I have the NTG5. It's a really nice XLR shotgun mic, which you can place out of frame. I've also used it in frame. I have my DJI mic, which is extremely convenient for content creation in YouTube, just because it takes out the stress of having to set up all that audio equipment. And then also when I'm on location, I'll use the video mic NTG, which is just a shotgun mic that I can plug directly into my camera, which is great when I need backup audio or I just want ambient noise. Also in my kit, I also have a C stand, which is really nice for holding the boom pole which holds the mic, the XLR cable, and then the Focusrite Scarlett, which I have on my desk, which is really nice to be able to plug everything quickly and be able to use it for any type of talking head or voiceover. Now for lighting, I have definitely upgraded in this department. I absolutely love my falconized light. The reason why is if you have a massive aperture like a 600D, it's just not gonna fit with the light dome and everything in this small studio space. So I have a two foot softbox equivalent. It's extremely thin. I'm able to use bicolor so I can go warm or cool depending on the light that's coming in to match with everything else. And it's just a really nice light. That's what's lighting me right now. I also have these two newer bicolor lights, which is convenient for side lighting, or you've also got back here this hair light. It's also nice for in the studio itself to kind of illuminate the space because sometimes the overhead light's just not enough. Behind me you can see my FTF corner lamp. I love this for aesthetics. It also lights up the corner. You can flip it around. It's just a nice little practical light to have. And then on the wall you can see my neon sign. This is a custom neon sign from Custom Neon and that's my production company. So it's just kind of cool to make the space look a little more elevated and feel a little more professional. And then of course my water bottle, I constantly have either my Stanley or my Hydro Flask next to me while I'm editing because it's just really good to stay hydrated. I love these two. One of them has a straw, they're both insulated and obviously decorated with stickers. And I have to mention my screensaver since a lot of you have asked which one I use. It's free, I'll link it below. I think it's Felique or Filippo. A lot of creators have used this and I think it's just kind of like that cherry on top. For those that are curious, so the software I use is DaVinci Resolve Studio 18. Love this for all my video editing. I have Capture One 22, which is for all my photos. I use Canva for my thumbnails. Notion and Apple Notes is where I write down a lot of my video ideas and track notes and to-dos. I use PandaDoc for sending contracts, Square for sending invoices and taking payments, Squarespace for my website, VidLead for obviously having a portfolio and getting more leads. And then I use Planner Vid, which is really convenient. And I'll tell you guys more about that in a future video for planning my YouTube videos and making sure that they'll be successful. So in a second, I'll tell you what things I regret as well as how much all this costs in total. But first, as you can tell, I love the neutral monochrome aesthetic, the black, the white, the wood. And I recently found a clothing brand that creates the dopest apparel for creatives and filmmakers. So essentially Onset Black was founded by creatives for creatives. I know the founders personally, and they have their own video production company on the side. They really wanted to create high quality production apparel. This is their performance material. It's more of an athletic type material. And then they have their core blend, which is essentially more of that comfortable cotton type material. They also have new products coming soon. So look out for that. Check them out in the description and thank you Onset Black for sponsoring this video. Okay, so what are some of the things I regret? 
Well, unfortunately, the HomePod mini was definitely something I thought would be cooler than it was. It has a plug, so it has to go directly into the wall as opposed to a Bluetooth speaker, which obviously is powered by battery. The sound quality was supposed to be really good, but it's just so small that the JBL speaker is better than that. And the Siri feature seemed really cool, but my watch, my phone, my computer, they all have that feature too. So it just didn't really deliver on what it promised. I also regret my headphone stand. It was really nice when I had my Audio-Technica headphones that had a wire, so I just put them on there. But now I have my AirPod Maxes, which look really good on there. I almost never put them on the headphone stand because they're always in the smart case. So really maybe it's regretting the AirPod Maxes because they have to power down in the smart case. There's no power off button. So maybe if the Gen 2 AirPod Maxes are better, I can finally use my headphone stand again. I also regret not purchasing a key light sooner. I thought it'd be better to save money and to have these cheaper lights. They ended up just making my videos not look as good. So this light has been a huge lifesaver. It's something I should have invested in more upfront. So if you're looking at lighting, I definitely recommend getting higher quality lighting, maybe even before a better lens or camera, just because it's gonna pay off in the long term. And the last thing is the Grove made felt pad looks super nice online. I'd had a previous felt pad, it was just too small, but the new pad didn't have any rubber grip on the bottom, so it was sliding around the desk. So I had to use my old, smaller felt pad underneath to lock it in, and then have my new, bigger felt pad on top, so then it wouldn't slide around. So I wish Grove made made a pad that had rubber underneath. Okay, and now for the grand total of the entire setup cost, it's $21,300 roughly. So this took me two years, a lot of work to piece together. My first setup was extremely cheap. I had to upgrade my camera and my computer and my monitor and my desk and my lighting and everything else. So no matter where you're at, whether you have a desk setup way cooler, more expensive than this one, or you're just starting out, know that it is possible. It's so fun to be able to see as you progress over time as you're able to bring in more revenue, replace gear, and obviously build your dream setup. Hopefully this gave you guys some inspiration for your setup. If you wanna pick up anything you saw in the video, I've linked it all in the description. If you have any questions, just hit me up in the comments. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.